Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, Admin Evangelist, and this is How I Solved It. In today's episode, you will see how the Dev Console can come in handy for admins to query information you need quickly. Today, I'm with Manish Chidori, Salesforce Solution Architect and Salesforce Delivery Head at CPR Vision Management. He's also a Salesforce MVP. He blogs at cfdcfanboy.com, and he's also the user group leader for the Singapore Developers Group. That's a lot of stuff. Hi, Manish. Hi. Hi, Jen. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself for those who don't know you? Yeah, sure. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm a Salesforce MVP. I've been in this Salesforce technology for almost 14 years now. It's been a long and fruitful journey. Uh, and I have gone through different careers, uh, roles across these 14 years. It's been a nice and good journey for me. Yeah. Wow, 14 years. <laughs> That's incredible. So I know you started your journey as an admin and then now you're a solution architect. What ways do you still identify as an admin? So uh, when I started as an admin, it was as an internship still when I was in my college. So it was the first time I faced, uh, learned about Salesforce. It was kind of new to me. And I've started digging more into Salesforce as an admin. And even now as a delivery head and a solution architect, I still look, do a lot of uh, admin activities like running reports, looking into user permissions, so which is good uh, because I still get to do hands on with the Salesforce technology, even if I'm into this uh, into this part for 14 years, right? And even just like today, also I've been working on some of the storage limits that we have hit in Salesforce. So I look at uh, how to delete the data, inactive data, and also I uh, also look at uh, from a solution perspective, what kind of data archiving solutions that I have. So, so it's been a uh, nice uh, way to be involved as an admin, even still at this stage. And how um, are you involved with the community? Of, I do a lot of community activities. So almost like seven years now, I've been a Salesforce uh, developer group leader in Singapore. So I run these uh, developer group activities. We run once every two months, I do sessions. Uh, we get uh, speakers from different countries talking about Salesforce. And I also share sometimes on my the learnings that I have from uh, from my job as well. Uh, again, I'm also a marketing champion. So I do a lot of marketing activities. So I do write about uh, marketing cloud or Pardot on my blog. Then I also run some of these dreaming events. So we organized a Singapore dreaming event uh, a couple of years back. And last year, uh, we did a Southeast Asia dreaming event. So it was a big, huge kind of thing. We had almost 1,000 attendees and oh, wow. um, all around the world. Yeah, so quite organized. And it was a lot of effort in terms of managing these events. Also, I do uh, write my blog post on sfdcfanboy.com, as you mentioned. Also, a lot of uh, posts there as well. And also, as an MVP, I also get the chance to work with different, collaborate with different bloggers. I also work with a couple of Salesforce programs, like a mentorship program or skills to Salesforce program. So I do share my time there, uh, sharing my knowledge and being a mentor for some of these uh, new newbies who are getting into the Salesforce careers. Wow, that's that's a lot of things that you're involved in. Thank you so much for contributing to the community. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, so you mentioned about blogging. Um, how did you get started with blogging? And how do you come up with the topics that you blog about? Mm -hmm. uh, so when I first started, it was a non-technical, it was more of a personal blog that I write about my some of my personal stories to share only for my close friends. There's even email was there, but I thought it should be a nicer way to share some of my stories. So that's how I started a blog. But then uh, and I use that personal blog to share some of my code snippets as well, because some of the work that I do in my day to day job, I wanted to put put it somewhere. So I put it in, I converted it to a technical blog. And every day I've been posting some of the learnings that I do from on a day to day basis, what, I, what I've learned in Salesforce, I started putting in them and then people were it was getting a lot of traffic because people were really interested in some of these topics. That's when I thought, OK, if you have something to share, like you, it may be easy, easy for you, but for others, it's something it might be something new for them. Right. So that's how I started to put in more content into it. 
and most of the topics that i choose uh, are from my day to day work uh, because if because if there's an issue that i'm facing how did i solve it how did i come up with a solution for it because some others might be facing the same issue right so so most of the topics are around this but i also do something on certification because most people are looking for to get certified so some of my blog posts are also on certification mostly on uh, marketing cloud so like an email specialist or an admin so i do a lot of uh, topics uh, articles on uh, certification as well yeah yeah like even with my blog um you know i did solutions based on things that i stumbled upon work and stumbled upon problems and i figured I can't be the only person working in the Salesforce ecosystem that has this problem. Why not share it out, right? Pay it forward. And, you know, it's um, knowledge is power, just sharing um, with the community. Right. So right. for for folks who are thinking about starting their own blog, what type of advice do you have for them? OK, um, first, I think why are you trying to build a blog so what's a, what's the a purpose and what's the theme that you want to set right so again you can have different themes whether it's to share your knowledge or whether you want to uh, write some tips and tricks so it depends but uh find a theme for it uh, it can be just sharing your tips and tricks or some people have only a functional content right? so they don't have any technical but it's very useful for those who are targeting like your newbies right and some blogs are specifically targeting architects so find your niche what is the knowledge that you're trying to share with others that's the one and i would say be consistent so as long as you're consistent with your blog you'll get a lot of traffic you'll get uh, uh people talking or looking into your blog for a lot of uh you this your, your blog will become your go-to solution for some of these people and also i would say do not focus much on the a theme and the aesthetics of the blog that is the secondary part your most important one is your content as long as your content is there uh it the blog will become successful great great advice for new bloggers yeah. so now let's switch gears and um why don't you share with us the business problem that you were trying to solve yeah as an admin uh, or a developer generally these issue that i'm talking about will be faced uh, if 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 in your project, if you have a poor documentation or if you have a poor development or deployment process, then you will face this issue. One of the most common ones that we face because of poor documentation is, so your project is delivered, your project is developed, and then you're now trying to deploy that into production. Now, then the admins run around or that even the developers run around finding what are the fields that I've created, right? In the last one week or last two months, because this project has been in development phase for two months, you keep forgetting. Maybe you had, you might have missed some of the fields that you've created, right? So how do we easily find the fields that you've recently created? Again, there's a standard way to do that. You can go to any object, open the field, you will see the created date. But if it, it will be impossible to check all the fields in <laughs> all the objects, yeah, so it's going to be very tough. So the solution that I've figured out, it's using developer console. Again, it's not a, uh, a developer's tool. It's an admin tool, I would say. And it, with a simple query, you will be able to get this solution. Great. Now, go into Salesforce and show us how you solved it. So here I'm on my Salesforce instance. I'm in an object. I want to quickly show if you want to see the created date of a particular field, you go to your object and you click on your field, you will see the created date. You will see the created dates in 2017. But of course, if you want something, again, this is how you come up, right? If your org is for, for so many years, you don't know how to find the latest ones here. So the best way to, is to switch to your developer console and go to your query editor. Here you can write a simple query. The most important thing is you select this checkbox. So we are using tooling API. Uh, so with this, you'll be able to write a simple query. So you're saying select developer name from custom field. So custom field is a table. And I'm saying simple query where my created date is equals to today. So I'm looking for fields created today. And you execute it, it will show the fields. But I also want to know what is the table name, right? So you can say uh, it's called table them or id so you can execute that you'll also get so 
total revenue is a field I created on account object. Launch date is a field that I created on this particular object. Again, you can simply select this. If you don't know what this object is, you can go to your Salesforce and in your object, you put that ID, right? It will show the uh, object name. And you can further extend the same also. Let's wait while it loads. So the field that I created, it was from books, books custom object, the launch date. You can also add created date to this. So I am getting my created date because it's today you are getting the created date, but let's expand this further. So instead of today, I would say created date greater than uh, last month. So I'm looking for all the fields that are created in the last month and I'm executing this. Here you, here you go. Few fields on account, few fields on, this is same object. So on the books object, you can see on which date it was created and you can just add all these fields into your chain set and deploy into production. And you can further extend this view if you want. You can also do some of these like quarter as well or last year, you can expand this further. So it's quite simple query. You just need these three fields. You're querying from the custom field tooling API. Great. That's and um, if an admin's doing this query, like how do they find out like the um, the names of the items to look for? Like how do they yeah. know it was um, okay. created date? Okay, so there is a documentation on this. If you can just Google tooling API, you would also get that. So it's a tooling API and it has all the fields it will show when to use uh, these fields and you have some of these how to retrieve metadata of an object field or you can also look for some of these will also include some code coverage on custom objects so we are we are here for custom fields right so you can use custom fields and this will show what are the fields that are available in that great in some fields yeah so the one i was referring to is table enum so this will give you the id of the object and also you will see the developer name, the created date, et cetera. Awesome. And well, this, that, well, that was really simple. <laughs> yes, yes, it's very simple, but most people do, are not aware of this, yeah. Yeah, this is, I see this as a great tool, you know, once they have that information from the um, developer side of things, they're able to do these queries into the database and get the information that they need. Yep. So for admins, the Dev Console can be a handy tool to use, especially in this case where they need to find fields created during a specific time frame. Thank you for sharing your solution with us today, Manish, and for being a guest on How I Solved It. Thanks. Thanks a lot for the opportunity to share the knowledge. Yeah, thank you, Jen. The Dev Console isn't just for developers. Admins can use it too. Manish used the Dev Console to quickly query fields created during a certain time frame. You can always find videos like this at admin.salesforce.com and also by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you will never miss another episode of How I Solved It. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Awesome admin.